I saw Sander Pichai, Google CEO, said that he likes the, the NSDR, non-sleep yeah. deep rest uh, podcast over meditation. Yeah, so non-sleep deep rest, NSDR, is an acronym that I coined because it encompasses a lot of practices that are not meditation per se, but that bring the brain and body into a state of relaxation and focus. So hypnosis is one variant of NSDR. There are other variants of NSDR. You can just look these up and you'll find them. And I think that they've caught on and that the CEO of Google is an avid practitioner of NSDR because it has this amazing ability to reset your energy levels and focus. Whereas with meditation, many people find meditation hard. And part of the reason they find it hard is that it requires focus. NSDR is a state which is very calm and relaxing. You don't have to work too hard. You're just listening to a script. Whereas most forms of meditation, not all, but most forms of meditation involve cranking up the activity in your prefrontal cortex and trying to see your thoughts as opposed to thinking your thoughts or focus on your breath, but then third personing yourself in some respect. And that's work. And so many people who meditate quite intensely feel more exhausted. Now, that doesn't mean that meditation doesn't have any utility, but it's distinctly different than NSDR. And I think that people are working, certainly the CEO of Google, I have to imagine, is working very hard and using his forebrain. If he's going to have 20 or 30 minutes to take a break, he should, and I think this is what he's doing, he should go out for a jog and not listen to anything and just kind of let his mind wander or sit there in a chair and just zone out or do NSDR. The problem is people are not that good at shifting states. We are all actually pretty good at, even people with with severe ADHD can become hyper-focused on things that they actually enjoy. And most of the drugs designed to treat ADHD are drugs that increase the levels of dopamine. So when you like something, there's dopamine release and you can focus. It's when you don't like something that's hard to focus. Shifting states is hard. I'm sure you've experienced this if, if you've ever been in deep research and then all of a sudden you go for a run, you'll probably spend the first third of that run thinking. And then in the middle third, you're kind of, that thinking is is fractured a bit. And then in the final third is where you finally get to relax because the brain doesn't shift states very quickly. We can go from sleep to wakefulness quickly. We can go from wakefulness to sleep quickly, but we don't shift between different states of consciousness like a step function. NSDR is terrific at allowing people to learn to shift their state. And I actually would venture to argue that Part of the value of meditation and exercise is the actual state that you get into in deep meditation or exercise. But just as valuable is the transition that you have to take yourself through from one state of mind to the other and then back again. So I think that um, NSDR is immensely powerful. It's zero cost. And one of the reasons I'm such a fan of people doing it is that most people don't stick to a meditation practice. There have also been a few cases, you might find this interesting. There's a book by Scott Carney, I forget what it's called, I think it's called the transcendence trap or something. I, I'm going to have that title wrong, but there have been a fair number of cases of people that go and do very extensive meditation, silent Reddit meditation retreats, who then return to normal life and end up killing themselves. There are states of mind inside of extended meditations or silent meditations that are very beneficial. And I'm certainly not suggesting people don't meditate, but I know at least one person who came back from one of these long extended meditation retreats and wasn't able to shift their state back into one that was functional in regular life. So these very unusual brain states are are potentially hazardous if people can't return from them. So it's, it's nice to focus not on those brain states, but instead on the shifting. Right. I do. Uh, this morning, I woke up a little bit earlier than I would have liked. I use this Reverie app and I do a self-hypnosis to put me back into sleep. And if I can't sleep, to just put me into a state of deep relaxation. I would I would put um, hypnosis under the category of NSDR, Yoga Nidra under the category of NSDR. There are now some NSDR scripts online. If you just go to YouTube that are, you can just listen to. And the more you do them, the more quickly you can shift your brain into a state of deep relaxation. You know, there's a lot of good research now on the neural networks and it shifts your so-called default mode network. It shifts how much of your forebrain you're using. And hypnosis has shown to be very useful for people to learn to bring themselves into a state of deep relaxation, to literally project in their mind's eye these very intense things that they don't like. And then for people to associate with other emotions in their body to learn to be calm while feeling your feelings, Mm -hmm. uh, to dissociate the mind-body communication to some extent. Just observe the feelings. Observe them and start to associate them with positive experiences. People really should know that stage hypnosis is about the hypnotist getting you to do things you wouldn't normally do. Self-hypnosis, which is what we're talking about here, is about you getting your brain into the state that you want. I really encourage people to explore NSDR. And if this feels a little too wacky and out there, then I would just put in NSDR into YouTube and there's some good NSDR scripts. 